What is up everyone? Welcome back to the LFC Transfer Room and today we've got another transfer update with some opposition experts and today we're joined by Leeds podcasters Stu and Sai. How are you guys? Are you okay? Yeah, good thanks. Very good. Thanks for having us on. Yeah, so we're going to be talking about something which I never thought I'd say, especially not in the last couple of years. Um, Patrick Bamford, according to David Ornstein today, is being monitored by top clubs, including Liverpool. So first off, you guys, um, before we start getting into, into Bamford, I just want to say congratulations on your season. Um, I think you've, you've been an absolute inspiration in the Premier League, Bielsa and all that kind of stuff. been great, great to watch. Um, but Patrick Bamford, um, sorry, is this something that you would have expected him to be scouted by top clubs, especially when you signed him just a couple of years ago? No, and, and actually it's one of those things as Leeds fans, um, we've had a bit of a love-hate relationship with Patrick Bamford. I think um, Stu and I were talking earlier on today, we think he's one of the only players that actually is better in the Premiership than in the Championship. Um, you know, in, in this season, he, he's surpassed all expectations. No wonder the top clubs are watching him. No wonder they're they're sort of they've got their eyes on on what he's doing. I think it's a strange transfer. I think anything to do with Bielsa is is going to be tricky because you look at Bamford, you look at even players like Stuart Dallas. Bielsa has made them who they are, and I think were you to just pick them up and transplant them into different systems, potentially they're not quite the player that everybody else sees when they're playing for Leeds. So yeah, it's a surprising one. It's a strange one. Um, we're just as surprised as you guys, really, in terms of how effective he's been this season. You know, I think the second most effective um, English striker behind um, Harry Kane. You know, that, that's that's brilliant. That's fantastic. What you're telling is that in in particularly his first season, where he was missing, you know, one on one opportunities, open goals, and things like that. You know, it 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 was it was a very different Bamford to what we've seen this season. So yeah, a bit of a surprise to us. Yeah, obviously you said he's better in the Premier League than in the Championship, certainly for Leeds. But he obviously won Championship Player of the Year back in the back in the day for uh, I think it was Middlesbrough, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, um, as well as scoring goals everywhere he's been in the Championship, especially well at, at that time. Um, so I, uh, Stu, sorry, I, I it's getting mixed up with names already. We'll cut that one out. Uh, Stu, um, in terms of his effectiveness this season, how would you how would you describe him? I mean. Has he been your out and out number nine, the poacher, sort of someone who's linked the play? What's what's Patrick Bamford been? Well, as I just alluded to, I think you know one thing you have to understand about most of the players that play for Leeds United is that, um, that Leeds United are good, uh, have a good set of players, but we're the sum of our parts, and so the idea, as I already said, of like picking him up and putting him in a team, really, um, I think from from the first minute you would start hearing people moaning about how he doesn't fit with the with the structure and he's not getting enough goals and the rest of it. What Patrick Bamford gives to Leeds United is a good old-fashioned striker. He holds the ball up incredibly well. I don't think there's another player in the team that covers the ground that he covers. He's incredibly strong. But one thing that he started to do in the Premiership, and we've discussed at length why is he much more potent in the Premiership, um, he's starting to, uh, his footballing brain is, is growing massively. And he's starting to duck in behind players. He can read the play really well. And against Spurs, really good example. Eric Dyer planted to the spot. Bamford sneaks in around, gets in front of him. And just very, very simple finishes. But he's also a protection as well. Um, I can understand why other teams would look at him. But, you know, on the surface, he's a Leeds United player through and through in as much as he just fits so well with our system. Um, I think maybe the Liverpool rumours have come on the back that it's quite obvious that we need another striker we, um, at Leeds United as some form of backup or some form of, I'm hesitant to say it, plan B. You know, so someone with 20, 30 minutes left to play. That's why Guerrero started kind of filtering through to us, like someone that could come on and have a real ballistic effect. Um, but I don't see Patrick Bamford fitting in with any other squad. I think he's grown massively and... Um, it, it's just a real peculiar one. I can't help but think that, um, you know, if before this season you said that he would be better than Vardy, I would have laughed at you. Um, and we have fallen out with other Leeds fans in the past by saying that perhaps he isn't quite as clinical in front of goal. But it seems to me that the physicality of the Premiership and the way in which he just makes the correct decision at the correct time means he's a Premiership striker through and through. And we can argue all day as to why it didn't work out in the Championship, but he's 
he's quality and, and he's reflective and he's learning. And I think picking him up and putting him in another team, don't matter how good they are, even Man City, I think it would be a mistake. Yeah. I saw it. He's 27, 28 in September. How much do you think Leeds United would be demanding for him? And um, do you think you could get an apt or better replacement for the money that you would coup for him? Um, it's a really tricky one to say because I think as Leeds fans, we're still finding out about who Patrick Bamford actually is. Um, you know, it, it, it's one of those things. I think on the back of this season, if you look at previous Premiership prices, he's now a proven... Premier League goal scorer and so the eight million that we spent which which was a huge amount of money in the championship mm. um for for us to spend and, and and put on him um I think we definitely recoup that and and more um so I think you'd be you'd be looking in the 20s to 30s um in terms of millions um uh, that that Leeds want also be aware that one of the things that the, the Leeds United owners have spoken about is they've alluded to the Leicester City model um, as something that they want to emulate in terms of breaking into the top six and ideally then the top four eventually over time. And, and that involves selling your best players. And so, you know, almost like kind of making us realise as Leeds fans, we might have to say goodbye to Patrick Bamford. We might have to say goodbye to Rafinha, who's obviously another name that's been linked um, to Liverpool as well. We may have to say goodbye to Calvin Phillips at, at some point. Um, but actually, I, I think. I go back to Stu's point. I could I could imagine if, if Patrick Bamford came to Liverpool, he's he's asked to do something slightly different to what he's doing currently at Leeds. And, and I, I think there is a synergy between the heavy metal football of, of uh, Klopp and the sheer insanity of Bielsa. There, there is that sort of synergy, but it is subtly different. And, and Bamford benefits from really scripted movements and he, he benefits from really um, well-coached plays. I think within four or five games, you could see Bamford on the bench for a top side because he's not instantly delivered. And where Bielsa's, he's an ideologue. He's just an absolute, he's loyal to a fault. And when the Leeds fans were calling for Bamford to be dropped, so for Tyler Roberts to take over um, and, and take that number nine position, just stuck by him. And my word, it turns out Bielsa and Klopp, you know, these managers, they know more than we do as we're sat on our couches. But yeah, I, I think Bamford these days, you know, he's not going to go for any less than 20 million because he's, he's had a season in the Premiership where he's shown he can score. But there, there's caution that I would, I would throw to the wind. Any Leeds player, just for uh, the guys that when you watch England play, and you see Calvin Phillips wandering around. I mean, even as a Leeds fan, he looks a bit lost, yeah. doesn't he? Like, he doesn't look like he, he fully knows what's going on. He's still a really good player, but he's been asked to do something slightly different to what Bielsa's coached him to do. And I think that's a really good example if you want to see how Bamford would fit in your team. I genuinely think he would look lost for, for a good four or five games. And with, with a team like Liverpool, who are who should be every season going for the Champions League final, who should be um, pushing for the Premier League, should be pushing for every cup going. You want a striker who, who can come in and make an immediate impact. I think it would take a while for Bamford to, um, to adapt. But he's, he's got all the, as Stuart alluded to, he's got all the, um, the athleticism. He, I mean, to play for Bielsa, you've got to have an engine. Um, <laughs> yeah. He's got a skill, skill set and he can finish. But I don't know. It, it's one of those, I wonder, I wonder whether Bielsa's, create such specific players that it's not going to be easy for whoever takes our, our players and, and and transplants them into their teams. I, I think, you know, with Mike Bamford, you can say that about any player at Leeds United. I, apart from Rafinha, who I think, you know, he's still new to us and, and can fit into another team probably relatively easily. I don't think there's a single Leeds United player that you could take that would comfortably fit into another team, especially not with the kind of pressure of um of being up top and, and trying to score goals every match that would I think that will cripple Bamford I think he would be on your bench within ten games and be sold by the end of the season he is he yeah. is on Twitter all the time this is the thing with Bamford like when he was going through a particularly oh, difficult yeah, yeah, time yeah. where he, he couldn't buy a goal I mean he was like taking it around the goalkeeper and just like kicking the turf and the ball's just dribbling out like he just desperately wanted a goal like he'd allude in in interviews you know, he's very eloquent for a footballer that he'd alluded in interviews about, you know, specific comments that Leeds fans or Leeds fan sites had made about him. And it's like, oh, you, you don't want to hear that from your footballers. You actually want them, the sort of the press trained, oh, we don't listen to the noise and things like that. But to hear him like, we listen to the noise and it's really affecting my confidence. Yeah. It's like, 
oh, come on, mate. Like, and, and I think that would be the case. Like, you know, a club like Liverpool, like a top, a top club like Liverpool with such an active and vocal fan base as well, if he doesn't score in his first five games, he's online. He's he's reading the the text. He's reading the tweets. He's reading. He's watching um, the YouTube um, sites. You know, fan sites. So it, it's one of those things where you know at the moment Bielsa is his shield, and he knows that he's got him. You know, we bought um, we've bought um, Rodrigo from Valencia. He's the Spanish number nine. He's playing for the Spanish national side up top, and he's relegated to playing the sort of the Pablo Hernandez number ten role at Leeds because Bielsa is Bamford's shield. And so, you know, why would he trade that? That's that's the really strange question. And um, although although Klopp could could have similar sort of um, man management skills to Bielsa, I just don't think you would be getting the Bamford that you would see at Leeds. No, definitely. Um, and finally, we're going to talk just slightly different away from Liverpool. Euro 2021, does Patrick Bamford deserve to go? Well, I mean... <sighs> I, I, who else are you taking? You're not you, you're not taking Vardy. Uh, I suppose we we better be thankful for Kane that he's still, still you know part of a two man team keeping that show together. Um, for me, <laughs> they've extended how many people they can take, um, haven't they? They've got a few more players they can take now. I mean, I mean, if that is the case, then then he's he has to be he has to be going. Um, I can't help but feel that he, it's going to be one of those summers where he turns into, if he does go, he'll turn into a mega villain because they'll do what with him what they do with Calvin Phillips and just shove him in field with no tactics. And all of a sudden, he's not scored any goals. He gets taken off just after half time, And I don't want to see his name dragged through the mud, to be honest. <laughs> Gareth Southgate's done enough harm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I, I, I sort of, again, like Bamford's a system player. Yeah. And if you look at the great England teams of the past, it's been built over a, a spine of players who who have a system that they they play well together. You know, is that whole you know Lampard Gerrard um, debate? Why are they not playing together? Well, because they've never played together, like yeah. in the club um, setting. And so, you know, when we had a real spine of players who were playing through the, in the same team in the same style, we've been more effective as a squad. And and I think that's going to be the case because Bamford still, even with his increased efficiency in the Premiership still needs a lot of chances to convert into goals, mm -hmm. and in with Leeds, yeah, there'll there'll be games where we where we concede four or five or concede four or five massive chances, but we'll also create we create so many chances, um, and then actually this is where he's become more efficient. He's scored more goals because of it, but he still needs more. And you know, case in point, even against Spurs, who who were an absolute disgrace. Like those those players are buying a living. The, the the game we've just played, they were just wandering around, letting us guys stroll through them. You know, we're a recently promoted championship side, mm. um, and and the amount of of chances that Bamford had, yes, he converted one of them, but there were other missed opportunities. And I think Stu's right. He could very quickly become the villain because if we're up against a lower uh, a, a lower ranked nation, we'll get those opportunities and he'll put them away. The moment we're up against a decent side, the moment we're up against Germany, the Netherlands, France, someone like that, where actually we might have two chances in the entire game, that's where if Bamford doesn't convert those, he, you know, the all, all the, well, that's Patrick Bamford. Why did we pick him? That sort of side of things. But there's got to be an argument made for him. I've got to say, there's got to be an all, argument. All that being said, you're absolutely true. It's absolutely true, everything you just said. I can't think of another player in this country right now that I would feel confident with those chances either. So Outside of Kane. You know, Cal Calvert-Lewin, you know, it's been a bit of a flash in the pan there yeah. um, in terms of he, he's not kicked on, has he? Um, Kane, Kane is in World Eleven. You know, that, that's, that's a given. And we're lucky that we've got him. But as that, as that second striker, what Bamford would give us as England is an engine and a work rate. And if, if Southgate was able to, you know, unbutton his waistcoat a little bit, have a bit of boldness and actually press and put the opposition under pressure, Bamford would be perfect for that. I can't think of a better striker for it. But does he have the guts? That's the question. Yeah, amazing, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining us on LFC Transroom. Where can we find you on your podcast and on social media? Okay, so we are I Leeds, therefore I am an unusual cocktail of um, football and philosophy. Uh, hey, Nelson's boys, so that's how it goes. Um, leeds, therefore.co.uk, and we are at Leeds, therefore, on Twitter. 
brilliant. Go drop the guys a follow. There will be all the links in the description. Uh, thank you guys once again. Make sure everyone you at home subscribe to the LFT Trans Room. Get us to 800 subscribers as soon as we can. Follow us on Twitter and on all social media platforms. And we will see you in the next video. Ta-da. Nice one.